A gift of the givers is about 150 families in Port St. John's in the Eastern Cape have been evacuated following heavy flooding in the area. Now, the Eastern Cape municipality and surrounding areas were hit by heavy rains in recent days, resulting in damage to homes and infrastructure. Rescuers are searching for three people who've gone missing in the flooding. Meanwhile, the South African Weather Service has updated the warning to orange level 6 for disruptive rain in the Nyandeni and Port St. John's municipalities. Some of the roads are inaccessible. Not all the families has been reached yet that uh, um, those who have been hardly hit for the current uh, rains. Um, uh, the, exact, uh, the, the exact amount of figures is a bit sketchy. Um, disastrous management and the municipality is trying to reach the areas to provide the data to us uh, to, to deliver this aid. But as I'm speaking to you, 150 families have been evacuated. Um, uh, they will be placed in uh, community halls. Uh, thereafter, we will be assisting them. The urgent call at the moment from the mayor is hot meals for these families and mattresses. Uh, uh, currently, the power is also off, not because of ESCOM, but because of infrastructure that was damaged, clean drinking water is essential. Because of the mudslides that occurred, some of the infrastructure has got blocked. So it's going to be a huge crisis. But we um, so we're just waiting for the proper to access the people that have been cut off. Thereafter, we will be a clearer picture as to the extent of the damage. Well, joining me now is a Provincial Cooperative Governance Spokesperson, Pierlo Oliphant. Mr. Oliphant, thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us this morning. You would have heard in that clip uh, the needs uh, stressed by Gift of the Givers uh, for their relief efforts. But I'd like to ask you concerning the extent of the damage. What do you know so far? Uh, good morning, Tokozo and the viewers at home. And Tokozo, since Thursday, the weather has cleared this morning, this Saturday morning. However, the aftermath of the floods are devastating and very destruction. The level of destruction in the Port St. John's town has not been computed yet, but it is extensive. Um, what has happened is that the residents uh, are presently housed in temporary structures, the youth community center all in Port St. Jones. Some have been uh, accommodated in the flats of the uh, a philanthropist, and people are trying to pick up pieces and counting the cost of the valuables, the houses that have been washed, as well as their belongings. But most importantly, and what is urgent at the, at, this, at this morning is the food for the affected people, uh, the basic necessities like the mattresses, the clothing, the toiletries, and the hot meals. And the most important things that the, uh, the flood victims uh, uh, require at this point in time are the identity documents, passport, etc., etc. However, a multidisciplinary team uh, comprising of the Department of Home Affairs, SAPS, Department of Social Development, COPTA, and the National Disaster Management Center, as well as the Provincial Dis Disaster Management Center and OR Tamba, are presently on the ground assessing the extent of the, the flood damages. Right. Uh, you mentioned the fact that the weather has cleared up, and, and that's certainly good news because I assume, you know, mop-up operations can get underway and much of the relief that you mentioned, the food parcels, can start getting to those families who are in desperate need of it. But, uh, you know, in our conversations with Port St. John's Mayor, um, she mentioned that, you know, there's an inaccessibility when it comes to roads because of the damage um, suffered there. Uh, talk to us about that. How much of that is hampering your efforts at getting much needed aid to those families and to those residents? With the, with the water subsiding and receding, uh, the engineers from the district municipality of Uartambe are on the ground 
and then building the road. Indeed, the, the roads have been extensively damaged, especially R61, which is the main artery that enters Port St. Jones and ends, exit Port St. Jones towards Lusigisig. That road has been, uh, has been uh, uh, damaged. However, the, the civil engineers are on the ground now building a detour for the travelers to access the town and also to exit the town. Um, what I can also uh, 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 highlight uh, in Dogozo is that um, so far three people are missing in the village of Hole in Lusigisigi. And uh, regrettably, one uh, German tourist has drowned and uh, sadly uh, passed away. That is basically the situation at this morning. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Olivant, for that particular update regarding that German uh, tourist. Um, but I, I want to talk about you, sort of the historic uh, infrastructure, state of infrastructure in that area. You know, the mayor was quite transparent in noting that infrastructure in Port St. John's was not in good shape prior to the heavy rains that we're seeing and is likely to have exacerbated uh, the devastation that we're seeing today. As the provincial government, I mean, what's your response? to that. She's talking about storm water drainage that is often overrun, which, uh, you know, common sense would dictate uh, contributed to a lot of the, the flooding that we've seen for the last couple of days. Indeed, the situation is like that. Uh, for example, the uh, electricity poles have been uprooted. The cell phone pylons have been uprooted as well, making it difficult for connectivity functionality when you are in that vicinity uh, to be uh, uh, to be effective. Virtually, basically, the, the area, the whole vicinity uh, is cut off from the world now. The stormwater drainages have been damaged. Uh, the town hall was flooded. Businesses flooded, garages flooded. You can just imagine the extent uh, the, the town museum, historical town museum of Port St. Jones, which has got a, a, a history and, and, and a valuable information, was also flooded. So you can imagine the extent of the damage to the entire town as well as the, 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 the O.R. Tambo district uh, uh, at large. Indeed. Well, you mentioned that three people are missing. One particular German tourist uh, found and uh, has tragically passed away. Uh, talk to us about those continued uh, rescue efforts. Where are they now? The, the lifeguards are on the ground right now. They worked throughout uh, the night and then knocked off at 10 o'clock. As early as 5 o'clock this morning, they were back at work again. They are searching for the missing bodies, and uh, an update will be provided in due course. Yeah. Well, Mr. Olifan, I think the pressing question at this juncture is, you know, what's the plan moving forward? Uh, the Eastern Cape is having to deal with another um, issue of a flooding right after, you know, flooding hit the residents of Gomani. So this is hot off the hills off of another natural disaster. These seem to be, you know, compounding with time. As the provincial government, there needs to be a plan in place to deal with the advent of these kinds of disasters in a more effective way, uh, you know, getting to those families a lot sooner, getting them relocated a lot quicker, fixing roads, uh, fixing storm uh, water drainage issues so that, you know, natural disasters like these are mitigated to a certain extent. I agree with you, Ndogozo. These floods come right at the back of the, fl uh, of the flooding that occurred on the uh, 8th of February uh, in 2023. However, the national, the president declared the, the state of national disaster in the province because of these uh, uh, floods. Uh, that also uh, enables us as a provincial government now to get assistance from the from the national government. As we speak right now, the National Disaster Management Center is in, the prov is in the province to assist us as a province to m help mitigate the extent of the ravages of, the, of these recent floods. All right. Well, Mr. Oliphant, uh, very quickly, before 
we uh, in fact to let you uh, go. Uh, just on, on the issue of the relocations, uh, so where are we with regards to that? How many families have been evacuated and how long are we planning to keep them in temporary shelters? Um, at present, we have got plus minus 150 families that have been evacuated. They are housed in a Greenfield um, a Community Centre all in Port St. Johnstown, as well as um, in the apartments and flats in and around the town of Port St. Jones. And in respect of the assistance, right now, the Department of Social Development is on the ground taking the details and inventories of all the affected families. And then now, uh, together with the Department of Health, as well as the South, the South African Police Service, they are taking the documents so that an assistance, as well as the assistance from uh, uh, philanthropists in the province and in the town, they can now uh, get in and assist and provide help to the, uh, to the affected, uh, to the victims of the floods. All right. Well, Mr. Olifan, thank you so much. We'll leave our conversation uh, there for now. That's uh, Mr. Uh, Pielo uh, Olifant speaking to us there from the Department of Cooperative Governance in the Eastern Cape.